nice modular solution by Cheeto Systems for drying and storing of the filament, but it's time to give it a proper test and to see its possibilities. Welcome to my tech fan to another filament dry review video. This is Fila Partner E1 and this box is sent to me by the Cheeto Systems in exchange for the review. There is no additional payment from their side, but this video and the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker. Looks like I have a filament dryer week again because beside this I have four more and one of them is inline dryer and also the HDMS. Now back to this unit. It is a drying and storage system. The maximum temperature is 70 degrees Celsius and the maximum power is 240 watts. It has two independent chambers which can be heated independent from each other. According to the website, it can reach 55 degrees Celsius in 12 minutes, but I'm more curious how much time it needs to heat up to 70 degrees Celsius, but it will be tested in this video. They also claim that the temperature variation inside is less than 10 degrees versus competitors where it is about 20. Now I wouldn't mind even if it is 20 if it rotates a spool during the drying, but we don't have this option of course here. In this case, yes, this is important, but what is more important that the entering air, which will touch the filament, uh, what is the temperature of that air? If I set the temperature to 60 degrees Celsius, I don't want that temperature to be 70 or 80 degrees, so this will be also measured in this video. Let's see what's in the box, and looks like I got a spool of filament with it. Contour, I never heard about this brand. And it looks like it is some kind of dual or three color filament. This is content of the package user manual, then two boxes, the drying system, power cable, and then we have these short Teflon tubes. We have to place them here to reduce the friction between the filament and this rubber element. I don't like this angle. Usually I don't like this kind of exit of the filament because it is perpendicular to this surface and not tangential. But in this case we can use it in both directions and since there is some distance uh, it has space for the bending. But this increases a little bit the friction, especially with those carbon fiber filaments. Let's take a closer look of the box, how it is locked, unlocked. Unfortunately there is no ceiling around this edge. Ah, we have the indicator of the humidity. At this point I'm not really sure how it works, but I will check it later. Mm -hmm. I think the darkest one, because approximately in this room now it is 50% relative humidity, and I can see this one is the darkest. Inside we have these rollers. They rotate quite smoothly, and a lot of space for the desiccant, and it's already inserted. Uh -huh. But to open it we have to take out these rollers. <laughs> uh, they could design a little bit better this. And there is a desiccant on both sides, actually. From the bottom, the oops, rollers fall out. Yes, this may be a problem if you want to change this functionality. These are opening and now it is ready for the drying. And if you want to store the filament, we have to close these openings. Now it is a storage box. But the ceiling is not really perfect. So it is important this opening to be opened and then we can place it on the drying unit. Hmm, is it symmetric? Yes. Now let's take a closer look of the drying unit. On the back side we have the power plug and the switch. On the front side we can see the screen. And there is a USB Type-C port, maybe for the firmware update, let me check. I found it in a user manual, it is for the firmware update, but I don't think that we should do any firmware update with the simple unit like a filament dryer. This is the input of the hot air, and this is the output. The screen is adjustable, and from the bottom I can see it's some kind of small fan, probably opening for the cooling of the electronics. I thought this is a door for the desiccant, but it's not, it's just for the assembling and theoretically it can be opened from the other side. Let's give it a power to see how it works. First step, setting the language, English, English. Looks like it is resistive screen, not capacitive. This means I have to press it a little bit. 
Let's change the units to Celsius. This is the current temperature and this is the set temperature. Current relative humidity, the countdown time for the chamber one or number two. Then we have here some preset values for the PLA, ABS, PA, for example, it is 50 degrees Celsius, four hours of drying. And then here we can preset some values for our needs if necessary. And it starts with the working. Now both fans are working. It is not too loud. I think there is somewhere a silent mode. Yes, this is noticeable quieter. Let me check the noise. From half meter distance in silent mode, approximately 46 decibels. And now 49. The difference is not big, but much pleasant noise is the silent mode. But during the testing I will test it in a normal mode, because this is a different setting. And as always if I stop the drying it will not stop immediately, but the fan will first cool down a little bit the electronics inside. After approximately one minute it stopped completely. I also notice it has a sensors inside and it can detect if the box is not in a place. For example I want to start the wrong box now. And I'm getting this warning. And now I can start the drying. And now I will do my regular sponge drying test. It is not exactly the same like drying the filament, but this is what I'm repeating with these filament dryer reviews and the results are more or less comparable with each other. But what is more important that during this one hour I will measure the temperature and relative humidity inside. Now I cannot see openings for the ventilation. Here the amount of the moisture will be bigger and probably it will stuck inside. With the filament dry we don't have so big amount of the moisture, but at least with my method we can see this error increase a little bit. This is my test setup. The location of the sponge will be here and I will insert one spool. It's nylon because I know it can survive this centigrade Celsius. And that's the sensor. Of course it is on different location compared to their sensor, which is probably somewhere inside. But I'm curious about uh, this temperature and this is what I'm measuring always with other filament dryers. And it is approximately 70 millimeters above the entering of the hot air. The sensor is connected to the Arduino Uno. I can see the values on this screen, but also I'm collecting the data every 10 seconds with this laptop. Weight of the empty sponge, 0.562. Adding exactly 2 ml of water, but I imagine the weight is more accurate. Two point five nine five. Sponge is located approximately in the center of the spool. After approximately 15 minutes it reached 70 degrees Celsius according to its own sensor and according to mine it is 68, so quite close and even the relative humidity is similar. Time for the half hour measuring. 0.885 And time for the last measuring. <laughs> 0.531 Lighter than at the beginning. And during this one hour of testing it used 0.06 kilowatt hours. Before I turn it off I want to do one more measuring. I will try to move this sensor. Now it is there completely on the other side sitting on the spool and I want to see what will be the stable temperature here. After approximately 8 minutes the temperature stabilized around 64.8 degrees Celsius which is uh, quite good. Let's check the spool with this thermal camera. This is the hot side, mm -hmm. 73 degrees Celsius approximately, and this is the coldest side, uh, let's say 57, so probably it was 60 degrees Celsius approximately. This is acceptable. This was recorded during the sponge drying test. Pay attention to that line where two half meets, 
This is why I think that the ceiling is not so perfect. For the drying it's not a problem, but for the longer storage, well yes. Let's analyze the measured values. On x-axis we can see the time in minutes, on the y-axis we can see the relative humidity and the temperature. Let's start with the temperature. We can see that it reached the 70 degrees Celsius according to its own sensor in approximately 18 minutes and after this the temperature was quite stable. Here it was open for 30 minute measuring and here for 1 hour measuring. And then the sensor was moved to the front and uh, after this the temperature dropped to 65 degrees Celsius which is ok. And here the lid was opened and it was turned off. About relative humidity, these are quite low values, so I thought it would be much worse. Here you can see when I opened for 30 minute measuring, it was a very minimal amount of the moisture which I let out. And similar with the 60 minute measuring. The result of the sponge drying test, and this is typical for these 70 degrees Celsius dryers, that after half hours it removes approximately 80% of the water and after one hour it is completely dried. In this case a little bit more because uh, probably it had some moisture at the beginning and after one hour it is fully dried. How about these relative humidity indicators? They are not so easy to read. For example I use this box and currently still the relative humidity is below 20%. Mm, yes, it's a little bit darker, but not so obvious. For example here, ok, I can see that 50% is the current uh, darkest, but not so easy for the following. I mean we have these values on the screen, but if you use it as a storage box, then it is very useful. I like the idea of this modular system. It is quite accurate, it can give those 70 degrees Celsius and other specifications mentioned on the website. What I don't like, uh, it feels a little bit as a cheap product, especially some plastic elements. And to use it as a storage, well, first of all, it needs some kind of ceiling here. And on the back side, I can see two holes, and I'm not sure why are they here. Maybe for the ventilation during the drying, but uh, during the storage, I don't want uh, any holes on it. Of course, we can glue them with some stick tape, but why are they here? I'm not really sure. I already mentioned that I don't like this exit of the filament. And also this screen. Today young users get used to smartphones. You know, really nice touch screen. But this is some kind of resistive screen which has to be pressed. And even me, I need it several times, few attempts until I press the button on the menu. So some better screen definitely would be very nice here. Otherwise, quite decent product. And if you need this kind of modular storing and drying system, then it's, it's okay, really. Only as a storage, as I mentioned, it needs some kind of sealing. This is my experience with this Cheeto System filament dryer. If you have some other, you know, fill us down in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video until the end and happy drying and printing.